Do you ever wonder what determines your body weight or your body shape or why some people seem to be naturally bigger and some people seem to be like really naturally lean? And with the prevalence of obesity rising every single year, why does it seem to affect some people but not others? And this is actually a question that has been researched for decades and scientists have basically come up with one strong, definitive, conclusive answer. That it actually depends and there are so many different factors that determine all the inter-individual variability we see from person to person. So we still don't know definitively, but it basically just comes down to the fact that we're all so different and we're all so unique. And if you're on board with the fact that genetics play a huge role in something like the inter-individual variability with like height, then it's probably not surprising that genetics play a big role in our body fatness and how our body regulates fat storage. But we know that it's not all genetics. Obesity wouldn't be rising steadily every single year if genetics was completely to blame. So scientists have basically been trying to delineate all the factors that contribute to obesity and package it neatly into one clear and neat hypothesis. But it turns out that it's just not that simple. However, the research that we do have has led others before me to take the approach that I'm taking right now. And that approach is to rescue my normal hunger cues by allowing allowing myself to eat until full satiation every day. I talk a lot more about this in detail in my all in videos that I'll link down below, but I want to explore what the science has to say about my body returning back to its natural set weight after I go through this whole weight gain and all in process to normalize my hunger. And by no means do I think that I would return to pre all in Stephanie cause I was like super lean then. And that was not my natural set weight, but I think it would look something similar to college 21 year old Stephanie. And at this time in my life, I maintained this weight really easily without really having to focus too much on food. And this is a version of Stephanie before I ever did any sort of diet or bikini competition. I still had a huge appetite then as I've had my whole life, but I ate to satiety and ate health conscious foods, but didn't have to do too much to maintain it. And this was about eight years ago, like I said, before I ever did any bikini competition or ever felt the need to be any leaner than this. So I want to look at the science that's available to explain why so many people who have taken this approach before me find themselves losing this overshoot weight, albeit very slowly during their all in process. And at the moment, there's quite a few different body fatness regulation hypotheses, but there seems to be two that are the most agreed upon. And despite the fact that these hypotheses can't explain everything, they can certainly point us in the right direction. And the first one being is the set weight model, which often compares our bodies to a thermostat. In this model, your set weight has been genetically predetermined. And when your body drifts away from this set weight, your body sends a signal to defend this weight. We think this is because fat tissue produces a signal generally presumed to include leptin, a hormone that inhibits hunger. And this signal is passed to the brain where it is compared to a target or set weight. And depending on the difference between the set weight and the signal, the brain can either send signals to make you eat or send signals to make you not eat. And the set weight model does get quite a bit of kickback because it doesn't explain the obesity epidemic. So if everyone has a set weight, then why are there so many people who are presumably well above their set weight? So this is where the dual intervention model proposed a solution to that. So this model incorporates elements of the set weight model, but instead of an exact weight, it uses a range that has a lower and upper limit that is genetically predetermined. And the upper and lower limit is defended by physiological systems, similar to the set weight model, but it also incorporates environmental environmental factors that can override the upper and lower limit, which can explain the existence of very, very lean people as well as obese people. And this model is actually agreed upon by a lot of different scientists. But something important to note is that beyond extreme environmental pressures, like the overabundance of hyper palatable foods, there does seem to be some evidence to support a weight range that your body likes to live happily and comfortably. So the whole goal of this video is kind of to tackle a personal interest of mine, which is why someone who undergoes a caloric deficit doesn't eat themselves into obesity indefinitely after they come out of the caloric deficit, especially if they overfeed. I want to see evidence that there are physiological signals that defend a person's set weight range that our bodies like to naturally live around. And I want to know what happens when you ignore these signals and you either under or overeat. And I also want to see why our body goes through a similar pattern when it comes to body fat regulation. So the story usually goes as follows. We go on a diet, we lose weight, and we do everything in our power 
to try to keep it off. Or we go back to normal eating, we regain all the weight that we lost, and oftentimes we regain back even more weight than we lost. And we actually have a pretty good idea of why this happens. Our bodies metabolically adapt to a smaller body, which lowers our energy expenditure because there isn't much food coming in with a lot less body to run. So the body adapts and becomes more efficient with the food coming in and decreases your metabolic rate. And it's believed that our bodies do this as a sort of survival mechanism in the event that there was a food shortage. And this actually happens on the flip side when we gain a lot of weight and there is an overabundance of food. Generally, your metabolic rate will increase because it was an evolutionary risk to carry too much body fat, which would put you at risk of predation if you were too slow and too big. So metabolic adaptation is actually pretty well understood, but we also know that how much each person adapts in either direction varies dramatically from person to person. Some people adapt way harder when they lose weight or adapt way harder when they gain weight. And to get a better understanding of why and how this happens, one of the most famous studies investigating starvation was conducted in 1944, according to the Minnesota Starvation Study by Ansel Keys. In this study, they had 36 healthy men, for the lack of better words, starve on half the calories they were accustomed to eating, which ended up being 1,570 calories each day for six months, which is a long time. And they had a goal of having them lose a quarter of their body weight. And a quarter of your body weight is a lot. So that's like a 160 pound man losing 40 pounds, being left at only 120 pounds. And I also wanna note that during the starvation intervention, the men involved in the study became obsessed with food. Some of them were reported to have collected cookbooks. Some of them drank 15 cups of coffee a day. And some of them even chewed between 40 and 60 packs of gum a day, which is absolutely crazy. And this is explained with our physiological response to try to defend that pre-starvation weight. So after the period of six months of starvation, some of the men were reported to have been eating up to 11,000 calories a day because they were experiencing such extreme hunger, then eventually did level off to about 3,200 to 4,500 calories a day. Now with such an extreme surplus, obviously all the men regained all the weight that they lost and a lot of them also overshot their initial starting weight. In follow-up studies, some of the men were reported to have suffered some pretty long-term effects for being in such an extreme caloric deficit for so long. The diet, more or less kind of mess them up. And interestingly, in the follow-up studies, 17 of the 20 men reported to have restored normal hunger cues. And although it did take them a long time, most, if not all of them, did eventually return back to their initial starting weight. And since then, a similar pattern of body weight regulation has been shown in a lot of different overfeeding studies, where subjects would undergo monitored overfeeding, obviously gain weight, but then lose that weight once they return to their free living diet. Dr. Stephen Guyanet presented this really clearly in a 2012 paper where he summarizes the response to underfeeding, bringing the subjects back to baseline with ad libitum eating, then overfeeding them, followed by a period of ad libitum eating again, and reported that they usually lose that overshoot weight gain, which leads us to believe that our response to hunger and satiety cues can manipulate our weight regulation. And this physiological response to weight gain is the exact reason why we think these signals have malfunctioned in people with obesity. And that's because people people with obesity are often reported to be leptin resistant, meaning that their leptin receptors are not properly signaling to the brain to stop eating. So putting this all together has led people who have gone all in before me to restore their normal hunger cues after being in a caloric deficit by going all in. And yes, they almost always overshoot their natural set weight when they initially go all in, but eventually and very slowly do come back down to their natural set weight range. And this happens because because their hunger cues are restored and their appetite eventually decreases, which is what I have hypothesized will happen to me. Because as of right now, I've gained quite a bit of weight, but my appetite has significantly decreased and I'm no longer feeling nearly as hungry anymore. And I think there'll come a point that I will stop gaining weight because I will no longer be nearly as hungry anymore and I won't eat nearly as much. And from that point, I do think that after my weight plateaus, that I will start to eventually and slowly um, lose some of that overshoot weight over time, which is what has happened to everyone who's done this before me because I just really want to reiterate
reiterate that I am in no way am the first person to do this method. I am just doing what others have done before me and I'm sure there will be people who will do this after me. Now there is something that I'd like you to keep in mind because like I said in the beginning, I won't go back to the weight that I was prior to going all in because I was super lean then. So after my overshoot period, I should theoretically go to my natural set weight range. Now I know this is like eight years ago, like I said before, so I'm not gonna assume that I'll go back down to being like that lean. But even if I were to go like five or 10 pounds above that, I think I would be perfectly happy there. And it's crazy because I can actually feel it happening. My appetite has significantly decreased, my weight gain has slowed dramatically, but I'm not going to rush this process of trying to lose this overshoot weight because I know this is not a quick journey. It can take months to even a year before I even start to lose weight, but I have to be okay with that. And one of the biggest problems with overshoot weight gain is that once people go into a diet and if they do regain the weight or regain even more than they initially lost, most people jump right back into a diet again, which only just restarts this cycle of metabolic adaptation to lower your metabolic rate and then having to bring it back up and suffering through extreme hunger again. So what I plan on doing differently is that I don't plan on hopping on a diet the moment that my weight plateaus. I plan to allow my body to lose the weight slowly over time, you know, by eating foods that make my body feel good and exercising in a way that makes me happy. Because I don't want to go back through that whole vicious cycle of metabolic adaptation and then extreme hunger and then having to restore my hunger all over again. So I'd rather just do it once, allow my body to slowly lose the weight over as long of a time as it needs to by doing it the healthiest way possible. And I need to make this disclaimer right now. So just for the record, just so it's perfectly clear, I'm not trying to use this science to say that everyone should go out and eat whatever they want. And I'm not trying to use this science to say that this approach is for everyone. I'm simply collecting and showing you guys the scientific theories that support why I've decided to take on this journey for me. I know this video was somewhat long-winded, but I hope that you guys have a better understanding now of what this whole all-in process is about and why I believe this process will happen to me because there actually is some science to support it. And you guys promised that you guys would stick with me till the end, no matter how long it takes, because it is going to be a slow journey to lose this overshoot weight. And I'm okay with that. And I'm also okay with the fact that even when I do lose this overshoot weight, that I'll never be as lean as I was before. And I probably won't have a six pack again, but that's okay. Six packs are overrated. Like the video if you liked it and subscribe if you'd like to follow along the rest of my whole all in journey. And I will see you in the next video. Love you guys.